Right. Um, let's just uh, let just do a bit of a reminder about sulfur. Can you give me the oxidation states of sulfur in H2SO4, SO2, molecular sulfur, and H2S, please? Bring those out. building. Uh, H2SO4? 6 plus 6. SO2? Plus 4. Sulfur? Yeah. H2S? Minus 2. Okay. So this is my, uh, this is sulfur towers here. It's the building that's owned by sulfur and H2SO4 of course being very very powerful chemical and used all sorts of times in in chemistry, it's got the penthouse suite on the top floor. SO2 is a couple of floors down. Sulfur on the ground floor, and H2S in the the, uh, the second basement down there, because it obviously stinks. Good hit. Play it now. You can just. Um, okay, so just have that picture in your mind when we start thinking about reactions of halides and sulfuric acid. So it's quite a lot of reaction chemistry here, but I'll try and. I'll, I'll try and sort of simplify it and condense it towards the end. If I take sodium chloride or potassium chloride and react that with H2SO4, and just a reminder, that has to be a solid, so we're talking about the white powder, sodium chloride salt, and it has to be concentrated sulfuric acid. The dilute stuff won't cut it. If we add those two together, we get a reaction. We make sodium hydrogen sulfate and HCl. Now, because there's very little liquid in this, I mean, H2SO4 comes with a tiny bit of liquid, but very little, that HCl is usually given off as a gas. The NaHSO4 is probably a solid or maybe uh, might dissolve in a tiny amount of solution there but the important thing is the HCl is given off as a gas. Okay, um, what type of reaction is this? Or perhaps more importantly, what type of reaction isn't this? Does that, does that question make any sense? What isn't it an example of? A redox reaction. Thank you. It's not a redox reaction. I just want to point that out because we've been doing redox reactions for weeks and weeks and weeks now and I've thrown about a thousand at you. So important to mention this is not a redox reaction. If we were going to identify it as a reaction, well acid has reacted something to, to give away a hydrogen. When, when acids donate a hydrogen, we usually say that's acting as an acid and Sodium chloride is kind of behaving as a base, so if anything, it's an acid-base reaction. Sort of neutralization, although it doesn't, doesn't get anywhere near neutral. Okay. Um, well, we're going to do this in a moment. Uh, the thing we're going to be looking for is the HCl gas given off, because uh, when hydrogen chloride hits, hits the air, it reacts with the moisture in the air, and it makes... Um, well, what the textbooks used to be referred to as misty fumes, which is quite lyrical, isn't it? Misty fumes. Sounds quite, sounds quite nice. Uh, they're not nice, obviously, because HCl is incredibly poisonous. You don't want to breathe them in, and we'll have to do the whole thing in the fume cupboard. But we get the idea. Okay, I'm going to call that reaction one. And I'm going to move on to sodium bromide. 
So when sodium bromide reacts with sulfuric acid, well, it can do exactly the same thing. We can make the NaH SO4 and the HBr, which would come off as a gas and which would probably be more misty fumes. Hydrogen bromide and hydrogen chloride are very similar. Again, that's not a redox reaction, it's an acid-base reaction, and it's exactly the same as the first one, so I'm, I'm just going to say that's, that's like reaction one there. But we know from our work on displacement reactions and other things, that when it comes to the halides, as we go down the halides, we see a trend there. What's the trend? Did you, did you find that? The weaker oxidizer. No, that's the trend for the halogens. Be careful with that. So chlorine, bromine, iodine, as we go down, they become weaker oxidizing agents. This is chloride, bromide, iodide. Stronger reducing. Okay, so there's an increase in the reducing strength. In other words, iodide and bromide are better at reducing other things than chloride is. And, and fluoride would be even weaker again. Fluoride uh, would, would, do, would do reaction one as well. Okay, <coughs> so the HBr then is not finished with H2SO4 yet. It's going to react further with it, and this time we're going to get a redox reaction. Okay, so we've got H2SO4 up here, our oxidation state. Uh, plus 6, and bromide is going to reduce it down just to the fourth floor, down to SO2. And then make SO2, and in the process, Br is going to be oxidised. What's it going to be oxidised to? Br minus, oxidation state has to go up. Zero sounds good. Br2. Br2. Okay. Um, I'm just going to flick that onto the other board because I want you to balance that properly. Okay, so when we put those together, so 2HBr on the left uh, and H2SO4 will make SO2, Br2, and 2H2O. So that's. That's reaction number two. And that's as far <coughs> as bromide can go. It's a stronger re reducing agent than chloride. Chloride can't do any reducing, can't do any redox whatsoever. Just a few misty fumes. Whereas bromide can take the, uh, the, the sulfur down to oxidation state plus four. Okay. What do you think happens when we put sodium iodide into uh, some conch H2SO4? Well, initially, anyway. What's going to happen first? Um, NaH2SO4 plus... Just NaH. SO4 has got a minus two charge. Yeah. So plus one, plus um, one, plus that cancels out. HI. Plus HI. What do you think an observation might be for that? Oh. Misty fumes, yeah. Misty fumes of HBr, HI, HCl, they're all, they're all kind of misty. Okay, now, we said that bromide was a stronger reducing agent, so it could go down to plus four. Iodide is stronger still, so express lift all the way to the bottom, stopping at chlor 4, 0, and minus 2, iodide can take the sulfur all the way. Now, this is, this is going to generate an awful lot of equations, because if you think about it, I can go from 
H2SO4 down to SO2. Well, that's okay. We've seen that equation. That would be the same as this one. But it could also go from H2SO4 down to sulfur or H2SO4 down to H2S. And, of course, there's nothing to stop the HI reducing SO2 down to sulfur or SO2 down to H2S. And let's not forget, sulfur can be reduced down to H2S <coughs> as well. So that suddenly generates one, two, three, four, five, six different redox equations. Let's, let's not do all of those. Let's just do one. Let's do the big one from H2SO4 down to H2S. Um, and it's HI. What's going to be the other redox product? So I2. I2, okay. And I'll let you have a think about balancing that one for a moment. What number goes in front of there? Eight. Eight. Has to be. Because we've gone from plus six to minus two, we need eight electrons. We have to have an eight there. Without doing anything else, without doing the full half equation malarkey, we're almost there now. Everything else will just fall into place. So just a quick inspection of electron uh, of oxidation states can sort things out for us. Can somebody um, give us the rest of that? We have to add water. We will. Yes. How many do you want to add? Number. You balance oxygens with water. Did, did you want another go? I was just thinking about it. Okay. I've got four. Yeah, so we've got four oxygens on the left, we need four waters on the right. We've got eight HI, so we'll need. Four I twos. Okay, and that should balance. Right there. So that the oxidation states can sometimes seem like a bit of insider knowledge. There's no way that looking at that equation you would have kind of been bold enough to put the eight in front of there. But knowing the the electron change helps you do that. Okay, there's another five equations that we're I'm not going to bother you with. You certainly don't need to learn them all. That would be a massive waste of time. You can work out and balance these equations um, on the fly, as it were, if you're in an exam situation. As long as you know the products, you can work out the reaction equation. So the key to this topic is knowing the products. Okay, so this is actually... Done for you. If you have a look at the practical... Um, 7.04, it's got a big table in it. Has it got two or three columns? I can't remember. 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7.04, 7
you, you've got to learn these classic things, though, because, again, you know, AQA might say in their exam, compound X is added to comp sulfuric and white misty fumes are produced. And, you know, you, you, yeah. you need to know that, even though you might never ever use those words in, uh, in, in conversation ever. Um, bromide produces... Okay, first of all, NaH, SA4, not forget it, and HBr, and then. And then. Reaction two. SA2, Br, and Okay. Well, the water is is not not an interesting product. Okay, iodide produces so many things. I we've got SO two, we've got I two, then we've got sulfur and H two S. All of that stuff. Okay, so I've deliberately not filled in the observations. We'll have a look at this in the fume cupboard now and uh, see what it actually looks like, and then we can fill in the gaps in a moment. <laughs>